Good evening, everybody. Are you a parent who has a kid who's in sports coming up in the fall? Or perhaps you're a student athlete yourself. Tonight will be a very important topic. We're gonna be talking about sports drinks. Things that you should know. What are the ingredients that are in these sports drinks? Are they good for us? Are they bad for us? But what are alternatives? What can you drink besides these things, especially during activity? So tonight, we're gonna to dive into this. And again, I'm Dr. Ryan Weaver here at Apex Spine and Performance. We do these spinal workshops to continue to give you the most up-to-date and current research on varying health topics. Tonight's just so happens to be uh, sports drinks, but we've just really targeted this towards extremities, um, sprained ankles in the past few weeks. But anything from kids in chiropractic care to what cooking oils to use, we want to continue to educate our patient base and our community. So let's begin. So sports drinks, you often hear, or electrolyte drinks. What are some of these things? Well, you know, the most common two, Gatorade and Powerade, right? We all know these, we know the colors, the most common ones, and now you start to see other variations of those brands. So the things that you need to know, you know, what are electrolytes for anyway? Well, most commonly you hear uh, magnesium, sodium, chloride, uh, potassium, things like that. And what these things allow us to do, especially as we sweat and as we exert ourselves, is to keep a balance in our body. Again, these ions allow electrical charges to go through our body. And at the end of the day, our body always wants to be at a state of balance. So the biggest thing that I bring up here, as we said, we're going to talk about side effects. We're going to talk about ingredients and then alternatives. So let's begin with the ingredients to these. So Gatorade and Powerade. The four most common things you're going to see, water, obviously, sugar, citric acid, and salt. Now, two variants there between the two is where they actually get the sugar from. Dextrose is in Gatorade, and high fructose corn syrup is in Powerade. Now, the most common uh, size that you see, typically 20 ounces, there's about 35 grams of sugar in each. You know, that is a lot of sugar. So, the things that you need to know about this. The other ingredients in there, we can get a little bit more on board with besides the sugar. We need potassium, um, we need sodium, we need these things. But we don't necessarily need the 35 grams of sugar. Some of the research, okay? One to four hour durations of continuous exercise, such as running, so marathons, cycling and triathlons, there is some backing to having some carbohydrates and sugars in these beverages. Limited evidence on the benefits of sports drinks such in short duration as in weight training, sprinting, and jumping. So, again, you see this all too often in things like football and basketball. That's not a continuous four-hour event. Yes, it may take a few hours to get through there, but there's a lot of stops, a lot of starts, quarters, half times, things like that. Research from Harvard. For non-athlete, or for a non-athlete, they state that a sports beverage is just another sugar, sugary energy drink. High sugar can result, so again, the side effects, in overweight, obesity, other health is issues such as uh, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, gout, and other dental caries as well. A study following more than 4,100 females, 3,400 males for seven years, and this was part of a study called Growing Up Today study, found that the more frequently ingested sports beverages were consumed, consumed excuse me, the greater the associated risk of a higher BMI leading to overweight and obesity, especially in men. The authors cited endorsements of the drinks by sports celebrities, because we see that all the time, right? As a strong influencer in young male athletes. So, the high sugar, unless it's a one to four hour long, continuous, emphasis on continuous activity, it's not really necessary. So, what are alternatives? What do I tell a lot of athletes that they can do? Well, number one, my go-to is coconut water. This has become a lot more popular in, our, in the world and in the market. It's relatively low in sugar, varying electrolytes such as, again, sodium, potassium, calcium, 
uh, and magnesium. Electrolyte infused water is another alternative. Again, watch those though for the sugar content. Always read the label. Electrolyte tabs and powders. So this is a really kind of fast growing market. Um, some of these brands, none, element, L-M-N-T is how it's spelled, liquid IV. So again, look through there. There are a few there that I have tried myself, actually all three of those. Um, ones I like better than the others. So again, these are all turnips. Water, again, by default, the more water you just consume that, that that will help. You don't need the sugary drinks. Staying hydrated, hydrated ahead of time as well is a super important thing. Not just during the activity, but the day leading up to it, the night before, all of those things factor into that performance. Again, you know, I see this a lot as well. Even if you're a manual labor worker, a farmer, construction worker, think about those calories of, from sugar that you're putting in your body. These are some other healthy alternatives. Um, I personally really, really, really like Element. Um, tastes good, there's varying different flavors. And again, it's, I'm not saying to use that in every single drink as well. Again, water priority, second coconut water, and then you can get into some of these powders and tabs that you can dissolve in your, in your water. So my hope is that that sh shares with you some education of thinking how much sugar, hidden sugar is actually being consumed in our youth and why do we have this you know, continuously growing uh, epidemic of obesity and uh, type 2 diabetes. What are the things that we can change such simple as just drinking more water and less sugary drinks? So I hope you found this beneficial. Uh, I know kickoff starts this week for a lot of teams. So good luck to all of you uh, in football and volleyball and soccer. I know some of those have started. So in cross country, wish you guys all the best and we'll see you next week for our next spinal workshop. Take care. Have a great week.